Do you ever feel like your thoughts and decisions are influenced by unseen forces? Imagine harnessing the power to not only control your own mind, but also influence those around you. In this video, we'll uncover seven powerful mind control techniques you can't ignore inspired by the legendary warrior Miyamoto Musashi. Lesson 1. Anchoring. Anchoring is a psychological technique that involves using the first piece of knowledge, the anchor, to change how people think and make decisions. Anchoring works because our minds tend to trust the first piece of information they get, even if it's not related to the choice they need to make. In a discussion, the first price offered often sets the tone for the rest of the talk, and any price offered is used as a standard to judge all future offers. Miyamoto Misashi's lessons demonstrate how he used anchoring in both battle and planning. He knew that the best way to get ahead was to control the flow of information and set the pace of a conversation. By giving his opponent an early anchor in the fight, Musashi had a clear advantage over his enemies, who often made bad decisions due to it. Anchoring can help you grow as a person and get along better with others. Anchoring can be used in various ways, such as setting high standards or goals as your anchor and then comparing everything you do to that. When you set high goals, you mentally push yourself to do better than you might otherwise. Visualization methods can help you change bad mental anchors into positive ones. There are numerous psychology studies that support anchoring, showing that seemingly unimportant information can have a big effect on how people make decisions. For example, people with higher numbers bid more on things at a sale, demonstrating how quickly an unimportant object can change behavior. Musashi knew that how you think about a situation at the start can affect how it turns out. In battle, this could mean showing early strength to make an opponent doubt their chances or showing early weakness to make them feel safe when they aren't. You can use the same rules in everyday life, whether you're working on your own goals, in a business meeting, or with friends. Anchoring is a skill that needs to be used with understanding and care. It can give you an edge in talks, boost your confidence, and have a good effect on other people if used in an honest way. Musashi's lessons stress the need for strategy, planning, and an understanding of how people work. Learning grounding allows you to set the rules for interaction, whether that means taking charge of a talk, managing your inner speech, or changing how other people see things. Through the clever use of supports, you can put your opponents in places where they were weak, just like Musashi did with his enemies. Lesson 2. The Power of Suggestion Suggestion is a powerful tool that can change people's ideas, feelings, and actions without direct conflict or force. It is often used in everyday life through small words or hints, such as, you seem a little tired today. By using words carefully, people can be led to think and act in certain ways without even realizing it. To use the power of suggestion effectively, one needs to understand how the mind works. The brain is constantly taking in information from its surroundings and processing it without us being aware of it. Suggestion works because it doesn't use reasoning. Instead, it talks to our minds, which control most of our actions. If planted in the right way, it will grow and change people's behavior without any opposition. In a talk or discussion, suggesting a course of action by making it sound like the next step can make the idea seem less like manipulation and more like a smart choice. Musashi's lessons stress the importance of subtleness in your approach, as putting down the right thought was often more powerful than using direct force. In a fight, Musashi might use his body language or placement to hint at certain moves or strategies, which would make his opponents respond in ways he had already planned. Understanding the time and place is also important. When using suggestions, a well-timed idea can push someone to act if they are already moving toward a certain choice. Consistency in what you do and how you act makes opponents doubt your own strength and dependability. Suggestions are not just for persuasion, but also for controlling yourself. Musashi believed in being in charge of your own thoughts and suggestion is a big part of how you see yourself and what drives you. You can train your mind to act in a certain way by constantly picturing success, thinking about good things that will happen, and repeating powerful beliefs. When used in an honest way, 
The power of suggestion can have a positive effect and help people get closer to each other. Suggestion is a way to change things without using force or direct persuasion, inspiring a group, helping a loved one, or changing your own thoughts. Lesson 3. Mirroring. Mirroring is a psychological technique that involves copying someone else's actions, body language, speech habits, and emotional tone. It helps build trust, understanding, and a sense of community between people when done correctly. The famous Japanese warrior Miyamoto Musashi was skilled in both sword fighting and everyday life, and his reflection on his opponent's movements, pace, and habits helped him understand and connect with others. Mirroring can be as simple as having the same stance, facial movements, or body language when talking to someone. This makes the other person feel more at ease and open to your ideas when they unconsciously copy you. In spoken messages, it is possible to copy their words, speed, or tone of voice, showing that you are in sync with them. Musashi used reflection strategically, especially during battles, by paying close attention to his opponent's moves, pace, and habits, and then changing to fit those patterns. His famous book, The Book of Five Rings, emphasizes the importance of understanding your enemy's mind and pace, which is related to the idea of reflecting. Mirroring is a way to connect with others and gain impact in social, work, and personal situations. For example, using the same tone in a cool and official setting can make you feel like you're on the same page, while responding with the same level of energy and excitement in a social setting can make the exchange more fun and lively. In love partnerships, reflecting your partner's feelings can help you connect more deeply and understand how they feel. Sharing the same energy makes people feel the same emotions, such as happiness or excitement, and keeping your emotions in check and matching their calmness or introspection can show that you understand their feelings. Mirroring should be done in a low-key way, not too obvious to appear fake or manipulative. Being relaxed and showing real understanding are key to mirroring that works. Mirroring should not be done to imitate or trick, but to build confidence and make talking to each other easier. Emotional mirroring goes beyond deeds or words. It involves recognizing and reacting to someone else's emotional state. Recognizing and giving comfort to someone feeling nervous can help bring their emotions into balance, building a better link with them. Musashi taught that knowing and controlling emotions were the most important things to do to win in battle and life. When doing emotional mirroring with respect and understanding, you can connect with others on a deeper level, making it easier to guide and affect them for the better. Lesson 4. Liking. The concept of liking is a powerful tool for building relationships and controlling others' minds. Miyamoto Musashi, a fierce and independent fighter, understood the importance of relationships and how trust can have a gentle effect on people. To understand what it means to like someone, one needs to know about their behavior and how relationship and likability can affect results. The liking principle can help build strong relationships and have more impact in both domestic and business settings. People naturally want to be around people who make them feel at ease, valued, and understood. It's not about being too nice or fake. It's about finding things you have in common with others and truly showing interest in them. This will help people trust and believe in you, which will make it easier to lead or persuade them. Similarity is a key part of the liking concept. When two people like the same things, beliefs, or situations, they are more likely to stay friends. Musashi knew that getting along with his enemies or finding things they had in common with him could help him in negotiations or planning. When you find things you have in common with someone, like goals, hobbies, or views, you instantly connect with them and start to like them. Compliments are another part of the liking concept. Sincere comments are a great way to get to know someone. People are more likely to reply happily and trust the person who is complimenting them when they feel valued. In the standard sense, Musashi wasn't known for giving praises, but his subtle form of praise took the edge off his enemies and made them think they had a good relationship with him when they really didn't. The liking principle doesn't just work between two people, it also works between groups of people. 
People who are liked by their teams tend to have more power as leaders. Musashi's lessons stress that honor and honesty are necessary for real success, whether in battle or in power. To use liking to affect others, one needs to make real relationships with them, understand what drives them, and treat them with respect. So, the liking principle is a strong way to make connections, gain influence, and form ties. By understanding people and using that knowledge to your advantage, you can become more likable and influential. Lesson 5. Priming. Priming is a psychological technique that involves exposing someone to certain triggers in their subconscious mind to change their thoughts, feelings, or actions. This method works because the brain is sensitive to cues in its environment, often without our awareness. Miyamoto Musashi was a master of mental strategy, using tactics like preparing his opponents for war. In modern psychology, priming is used to get people ready for something by putting ideas, thoughts, or feelings in their subconscious mind. People are more likely to behave in a way that fits with a certain trigger after being exposed to it. For example, if someone sees or hears things that make them feel warm and safe before going to a social event, they might act more freely and nicely. Conversely, if they are exposed to negative or violent cues, they may react with anger or defensiveness. Musachi's approach to prepping can be seen in his preparation for battle, keeping a close eye on his opponents to figure out how they were feeling and thinking, making the air tense or unpredictable before the fight gives him a tactical edge, as they were more likely to make mistakes when they were already scared or unsure of what to do. Priming can be used in various scenarios to change results in a subtle but powerful way. For example, to get people excited about a presentation, telling an inspiring story, or showing a powerful picture can make people feel successful and in control. On a personal level, using positive mantras or visual messages can help remember values and goals. Priming can also improve partnerships and social skills by choosing the right mood before a talk steering feelings in a way that is good for everyone. Starting a talk with praise or a nice thing can make people feel valued, making them more willing to listen to your point of view. So, priming should always be done in an honest way, with the goal of making things better for everyone. Musashi's lessons stress the importance of respect and focus in all kinds of strategy, and priming should not be used to control others for personal gain, but to steer events toward a solution that is good for everyone. Lesson 6. Emotional Manipulation People often get the wrong idea about emotional influence because it can be used in bad ways. However, when used in a good way, it can be a very useful tool for controlling yourself and others in a good way. Miyamoto Musashi, who was good at both mental and physical planning, said that these kinds of tools should only be used for good reasons, so that emotional control is balanced with honesty and self-control. At its core, emotional deception is the act of knowing and controlling other people's and your own feelings. It takes being able to correctly read people's feelings, guess how they will respond, and plan how to handle your own emotions. Musashi taught that keeping your feelings in check was important for staying clear and focused in fight. Emotions like anger, fear, or overconfidence could make it hard to make decisions, which could lead to mistakes or loss if they are not under control. Musashi always said that controlling your emotions is just as important as learning how to do things physically. In real life, manipulating someone's emotions starts with knowing yourself. Learning to recognize what makes you feel stressed, angry, or excited can help you learn to respond instead of react in tough scenarios. This means being aware of when your feelings come up and choosing how to show them or hide them. For example, instead of having your anger build up into a fight, you could choose to stay calm and firm, which would give you the upper hand in solving the problem. Emotional intelligence is the key to manipulating emotions in a moral way. To get people to do what you want, you can use emotional trickery to make them feel good, which can lead to teamwork, trust, and mutual respect. Leaders, for example, often use motivating talks to get their teams excited or united so they can work together to reach their goals. When you understand other people's emotional needs, 
you can have talks or take steps that are good for everyone. To do this, you might need to understand someone's worries, show that you care, and then slowly guide them toward an answer that fits your needs. In partnerships, emotional trickery can also be used to get closer to someone. People feel valuable and respected when you use positive feedback, like praise or words of support. When having a tough talk, emotional manipulation could mean seeing things in a better way, which would ease stress and allow for a more productive conversation. Musashi would want people to find a balance between being able to understand and manage their feelings without letting them drive them. One important part of his theory is to stay cool under pressure. This shows how mental control helps people make better decisions in tough situations. In a way, you are not only in charge of your own feelings, but you are also quietly directing the emotions of other people. But there is a thin line between using emotional trickery to help someone and using it to take advantage of them. Positive emotional manipulation leads to growth, teamwork, and mutual benefit. On the other hand, negative manipulation, like taking advantage of someone's fears or doubts for personal gain, can hurt them in the long run and break trust. Musashi's focus on honor and discipline is a good lesson to use these skills in a moral way. Emotional trickery can also help you deal with problems in your own life. If you change how you think about tough scenarios, you can change how you feel from becoming frustrated or anxious to strong in learning. This way of controlling your emotions helps you stay focused on your long-term goals, even when things go wrong. So, emotional management can help you deal with problems in your personal and work life if it is based on understanding and good intentions. It makes it easier to connect with other people, have a good effect on their emotions, and keep your emotions in check when things get tough. By following Mizashi's advice on how to handle your emotions, you can not only improve your relationships with other people, but you can also feel more at peace with yourself and in charge. Lesson 7. Scarcity Principle The scarcity principle is a powerful tool that leverages our natural fear of missing out to make decisions quickly. It is often used in sales and marketing to make people feel like they need to buy something more, as it makes them value getting the thing over making a smart choice. This principle applies not only to tangible things but also to intangible ones such as time, attention, and chances. Miyamoto Musashi, a renowned planner, understood the importance of time and its value. Making time seem scarce not only makes it more valuable, but also makes people more likely to value it. This approach makes it clear that others shouldn't waste their time or energy. The scarcity principle is even stronger when it comes to how people interact with each other. Limiting one's visibility or availability can make others value you more, especially in dating or negotiations. Being smart about when and how you offer something, like your time, skills, or resources, can make it seem rare, raising its value. Using the scarcity principle is a good way to negotiate, as it makes the other person more likely to agree to your terms. For example, if a job candidate shows that they have other limited time options during a job offer, it forces the company to move quickly, leading to better offers or faster choices. The scarcity principle can also help individuals become more disciplined and focused. Being aware of your limited time allows you to focus on what truly matters and get more done. This mindset helps you set priorities and stop putting things off, making the most of every moment. The scarcity principle is a powerful tool for changing people's behavior and can be applied in personal relationships, business talks, and self-management. Musashi emphasizes the importance of understanding and using this psychological tendency in a smart way. By limiting access, giving away something special, or realizing the value of time, the scarcity principle can motivate others to act while staying focused and smart in your own life.